What's up, y'all? How's everybody making out? Man, we back. Another Real Talk Tuesdays. It's your man, Don Massey, head of DM Football. April is Autism Awareness Month, so you definitely got to represent for the autism autism people. I have a couple of uh, friends of mine and a couple of colleagues of mine who do have autistic kids, and it's a big thing when, you know, um, when you give them some time and some help. So you got to make sure that you reach out to anybody that you know. Um, that's dealing with that, man. Let's try to raise awareness and do whatever we can, whether it be spending time reading books, whatever it is that you can, offer your time to autis autistic people because they deserve love too at the same time. Uh, got a good show on for you guys tonight. Tonight we're going to bring on uh, a couple of NFL dudes, all right, you know, a couple of college dudes. We're going to just be talking about a lot of things, you know, there's a lot of things that's going on. Want to make sure that you guys are informed with what's going on and make sure that we all doing what we got to do. Um, right now, I'm hoping that everybody is doing what they have to do as far as dominating the classroom for my young guys that's in college and the young guys that's on in, in elementary school or high school. I'm hoping guys are staying active. I'm hoping guys are making sure that they're doing things to improve their bodies, whether it be working out in the house, whether you have a yard and you could do something in your yard. Just make sure that you're working on your craft. You got to make sure you keep building upon whatever goals and stuff that you have for the future and upon, upon a lot of the stuff that you have put in already. You want to make sure that I know a lot of guys have been doing a lot of work. Some of my guys in West Orange been doing a lot of work. Some of my guys in my 7 on 7 team been doing some work. So I want to make sure that you guys aren't letting that work go to waste. So make sure you use this time wisely. We do have a lot of time on our hands with this coronavirus. So I want to make sure that everybody's using their time wisely to make sure that they're improving themselves not just mentally but also physically so um you know like i said if you got any questions you know i'd be love to talk to anybody about anything um when my guests come on i want to see if you guys have questions for them i want you guys to talk to them so you know there's a lot going on shout out to everybody that's online i see some people on here you know they're just tuning in and i mean this show is being recorded so a lot of times you'll see I uh, just recently started putting the stuff on YouTube, so you can go to Driven Minds on YouTube, subscribe, you'll see some of the interviews, I got an interview with Brittany Anderson, the girls, t uh, I'm sorry, the women's coach at um, Virginia Tech, her interview is on live right now, Rasul Douglas interview is on live, many other interviews will be posting up, so make sure you subscribe so that way when we drop a new interview, you guys can see it, and if you don't, like I said, if you miss out, it's not a problem, this will be aired on YouTube. Uh, make sure you follow, like, subscribe. Give me all types of suggestions. I'm willing and open to hear everything that you probably want to hear. Maybe I'm missing out on some things that you want to be a part of. So, you know, just let me know. We'll try to get to that um, the best that I can. Like I said, I'm trying to do my best uh, with letting everybody know, you know, about just trying to make sure that they're, uh, they're in there. What's my word? I'm trying to think of. Yeah, doing drawing a blank. I'm trying to make sure everybody is aware. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to make sure everybody is aware of what's going on as far as what you need, as far as for high school to get from one level to the next level. What does it take as far as determination to get to college, high school to college, and then a lot of the other stuff after that is football, basketball, baseball, whatever. The sport will not be played forever. So you got to make sure that you're investing in yourselves academically. You got to make sure that you go home and you get that, you know, you put that work in, you're studying, you're reading more. Make sure that you're doing what you have to do because when it's all said and done, you're going to have to use that degree that they're going to give you to make money. So I just want to make sure that everybody putting themselves in a good position. And if you're not going to go as far as getting a degree, you got to make sure that you're putting yourself in a position where you're going to a technical school, some form of fashion where you can make money for yourself and be accredited at the same time. Let's see if one of my guests is available right now and bring him on. I'm looking for Kamoko Ture. Boom, there he is. We're going to bring Kamoko Ture on the show right now. Like I said, I want everybody to, like I said, tune in and tell everybody that, you know, we got a live show going on right here, man. DM. I hear him. I don't know if I can see him, though. What's going on, big guy? Hey, man. Had to get you on here, man, because I know for you, what you mean to the community, man, is big, bro. It's very big. You know, a guy that we probably would say was counted out, and then, man, you just made sure that, 
You mean everybody eat their words in the end. Like, nah, you're going to see from me. You're going to hear from me. But like I said, I want you to introduce yourself. Let everybody know who you are. I am, I am recording live, so they'll get they'll better catch it, too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, my name is Kamoko Tarek. I'm here for the Indianapolis Colts. I'm a defensive head. You can say pass rush. Pass rush Edge rusher, right. Um, I was raised in um, East Orange, moved to North. Um, from Jersey, from Jersey, so I'm currently living in Indianapolis because I'm um, playing football and stuff like that. So this is me. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You know, like I said, I know, like you said, you in Indy right now because with this coronavirus thing, you got to be close. You never know when they're going to hit the switch and say you guys got to get right back to work. So you know, I feel you, and I see you doing oh, yeah. a lot of grinding, that rehab, and man, I'm looking for a big season out of you, man. I know you was you. Was, just about to start reaching the peak. I'm like, oh baby, here he come. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but for real, for real. let's t- let's talk about that injury. Like, do you would you say that that injury was one of the, like one of your hardest obstacles you had to overcome so far? I mean, I had many obstacles throughout. Um, just growing up, you know, you know, growing up in a rough neighborhood, you know, North, you know, you know how it is. Um, mm-hmm. we, we see people that we grew up with. I lost a lot of people throughout my life, but. Um, I I had faced obstacles like my my biggest obstacles were um were you know two shoulder surgeries that I had rubbers um my first major surgery uh, that I ever had and ever like faced mm-hmm. so I mean I, I I had to learn how to be while dealing with these injuries and um with the shoulder surgery I had to like and that's what they, I had a wake up call and see what well, like do I really love Paul. Or do I do I just step back from it, or just give up on my dream, or whatever? So I had to make a decision. So, and that's when it, that woke me up. You know, I had to make a decision right there, there with, the, with the with the two major injuries that I had in, at, in college. Mm. Yeah, man. But I know how to deal with I know how to deal with this, but more like privately because of the two injuries that I had. Right, right. Mentally pre- prepared yourself for it, you know. Coming from, like you said, I know you was at Rutgers, came out the gates hot, man, blocking field goals and all yeah. that. And then, like you said, you yeah. had to go through those setbacks. So, I mean, for you to make it to the level you are right now and to have a small setback, I guess, like you said, it's it's nothing. You know, just part of the game. Right. You're going to put yourself right back in position. I applaud you on that, man, right there. It take a lot of mental to, uh, you know, yeah. to get through that. A lot of guys tap out mentally, man. And uh, I guess that's why I'm going to have to ask you this next question. Like, what, what motivates you to... You know, I guess being the athlete that you are today. I mean, a lot of things motivated me. Um, going through what I went through, my mom, my mom and my dad was a uh, was an entrepreneur. Um, they did their own, the, um, they did their own thing. They created their own job. My mom was a hair braider. My dad was a um, tailor mm-hmm. for many years. A lot of people saw my dad around the, uh, around the neighborhood. Um, my dad been, you know, doing tailor for forty years. Um, I just seen how hard they worked, you know, and I didn't like the way I lived and it's and I couldn't do about it. But you know, I, I knew I could have fixed it just fixing me. Um, mm-hmm. I was hanging with the wrong crowds, um, when I lived in East Orange, getting into a lot of fights and um getting into trouble. And I was always a good kid at heart, but in my environment I didn't know what to look up to. I just seen negative things, everything. So I think that I got I gotta do what I gotta do to survive, you know. Right, but right. um, I faced that obstacle, so it's like it, just going through that obstacle and, I, and seeing what my mom went through, I felt like I would not help my mom any more, any better. So um, I you know I had to like dedicate myself into you know, and um, just constantly just keep working. I, I, mean, I thought I was playing basketball. <laughs> I played basketball. You know, I dedicated my time to play AAU basketball, play for Team My God. Mm-hmm. Uh, played for one of my boy Kenny, uh, Kenneth Grant, mm-hmm. and he's hard. And I played for Coach Bell, played for my ninth grade year, uh, football, quit. Mm-hmm. And I played for football. Um, what motivated me was just the struggle that I was going through. Mom, my mom just like worked extra hard to make ends meet. And we didn't have no electricity bills. And um, I had, and I was a man, I was the oldest of seven, so, and I, I could. Wow. In my actions, I stopped, you know, I stopped hanging with most hours, getting my grades right, constantly staying, staying extra hours and working on my life, trying to get better at basketball, and um, just doing, like, I like the 
sound going in and out. Make sure the sound is good. Yeah, damn, that's North Tech Terrier in the house playing with Sadat. And I think they won the title, too, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, yeah, 2013, yeah, I'm dead. <laughs> I remember that. I remember started that. Started right here, though. Oh, there they go. Them Terriers get to talking smack. But that's what's up, man. <laughs> I, I, look, hey, man, I salute the Terriers, man. I got brothers that I know played for them, man. And, I mean, it's honestly one of the best-kept secrets, man. Like, you, when you go there, not only do you get to play for, um, you know, a school that you want to go to, or play for you also get to um develop i'm guessing is it a trade that you can pull out of there mm-hmm. yeah like you know so now you come out the gates with a decent trade you know and i mean just in case things don't work you already got a stepping stone that you could build off of so i like i like that opportunity of north tech that it offers to school kids in the urban community what do you think about you know kids that go now you 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 just said yourself from north Grew up in Newark, you had to deal with a lot of stuff, and I'm quite sure with your size when you was young, a lot of people looked at you like, yo, why don't you go to, like, a school that's, I don't know, a private school? You know, what was the big deal? Like, like what would you look at the difference of why you picked Newark Tech over other schools in the city, or in the state, for that much? Um, I was very, I wasn't, I was, I was caught up into, like, big school. I, I, was, I didn't let big school define and um, I see a lot of people just try to. Um, the schools been taking a lot of good athletes away from other schools for for their art athleticism or whatever. But me, I know that I will create my legacy in whatever school I go to. Mm. No so I don't I don't let a school and a name a brand define who I am. Mm-hmm. I then I, I let my myself motor this mentality make that decision and and put me in and God God want me to be, you know? Right, right. Um right. I on uh, I, I don't hear like I don't play a lot of big good schools, Saint Anne or Saint Pat and um Saint Peter's and like them big it, was, it was, that that I mean I mean I just knew my work ethic. I knew that I could I could I could do what I if I do what I have to do do stay in school He's right. Great. So like, stop getting into trouble. Um, just stay focused and constantly working on my craft every, each and every day. That I will be noticed in no matter school I go to. And and I guess I and I guess and, that, and that's what I've seen with a lot of kids. You know, where they get they get they get their mind into like, well, I did this school, but that's where it's at. That's what I'm gonna be noticed at. Nah, it doesn't matter what school you go to. Right, As yeah. you can see, I'm gonna keep proof. Where I went to Rutgers, you know Rutgers University, compared mm-hmm. to a lot of guys that I've seen that I that I went to Jabra, a good school and whatever, and he went the first round, and I went to a that you know as Michigan, you know Michigan State, Michigan, and mm-hmm. whatever I was there, and I was in the second round. So that and that that school shouldn't define who you are. And you, because I don't see a lot of people, a lot of players that I went to school and they didn't get drafted or whatever or are still fighting for a spot into the NFL or whatever. Right, right. People, that's what people get that thing. You got to look at yourself in the mirror. Is, am I doing the things right? What am I, you know, I'm going to do this I don't have to work hard no more or I'm going to go to an forever. Okay. Nah, like, that's what people get that mentality. You got to come harder on your craft because at the end of the day, if you go to that big school, you go, you, you, you're going in competition no matter what. Right, right. You, you, competition. Not competition against people. It's competition against yourself. Right, right. And each, I had that conversation. Each and every, each and every year, you got to look at yourself. Am I better than last year? Mm. After that, you're going to be like, okay, two years ago, am I better? What did I You got to look at yourself. You got to write a, a goal down for yourself. Okay, what did I do? What's my goal first year? What's my second year? What's my goal third year? Because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, you're not, people worry about the wrong thing. Where are other people? Oh, he's doing better than me. Oh, I got to be the best pass rusher because Bob Miller's better. Uh, Jason, uh, or it doesn't matter what it doesn't matter what person it is. Mm-hmm. It's just that you people just forget to look at themselves. What what am I doing wrong? And mm-hmm. what am I doing right as well? So, and that's what that, and that's got me far in life because I don't I I look I compare other people but I also compare myself. 
from what I did last year. I constantly look at film study on myself. Mm. I didn't like this. I watched this film. I was I got this athletic. I got the speed. I'm not using, I'm not doing more hand. I'm doing relying on my athleticism. Mm-hmm. Where okay next year, what can I do better than last? Oh now this year I got to do more hand usage. Okay. I got to constantly look at my opponent. I got to read schemes, offensive alignment. Of, now I got to learn the scheme where the back is deep, back is um, back is even, or um, when the or when quarterback is no there's no quarterback. Like, you know just okay. learn, understand the game. And once you understand that, you'll become a better athlete. Right. Right. So it's just more studying yourself as a person, right? Rather than other people. That's what I'm talking about right there. That's crazy. Mastering your craft. That's all it is. It's mastering your craft. Absolutely. Make it, making sure that you are better than what you were. Because as long as you're better, then they're going pretty much. You know, they're going to pay for that. And you know, you'll live in testimony of that. That if you keep working at yeah. it, they're going to pay for that. You know, I mean, I was going to ask you a question. What advice you would uh, give a young athlete? But what you said was plenty. What you said was plenty. Just keep working on yourself. Um, make sure that you keep pushing yourself and make sure you're putting yourself in a better position. The school don't make you. You make the school at the end of the day. I, I'm feeling that, bro. I'm feeling that. Absolutely. Like, and then, and then, and around you, look, I, I would give any kid that, that asks for my advice, I would say, you know, you got to work on yourself. Like, you got to and then compare and say, I want to be that. Because everybody has a everybody has a story. Your story may not be Von Miller's story. My story would never be like Von Miller. I don't know what Von Miller did behind close to get to where he at. Mm-hmm. I got to find my craft and I got to find a way to get better because my story doesn't match up to his. Because mm-hmm. what he did behind closed door got him to where he is now. Right. So you say, okay. Oh, but then again, you got to look at yourself like, okay, what am I doing often? Either doing charity mm. or, or doing back to be or, or even like working with somebody, working with somebody, getting, getting, getting up in the morning, eating right. Every little thing that you do, sleeping right. right, right. Thing that's going to get you right. Oh, staying up, going out to a party and then it's like, okay, got to have that self control. Like, oh, I can't do this because. Football season, I can't smoke because football season about to start. Anything that's gonna to dream, act that out, you know. So I saw by a lot of kids like it's gonna be hard. Like we sometimes we get, um, um, we sometimes get used and get distracted when we're not in that 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 on where the football season is over and we're we like, okay we're free and we could do whatever. No matter what, a lot of kids that get that. I'm an athlete. I'm gonna get a lot of leeways, no, because I don't see a lot of kids that that was that was with me, that the friends that was playing sport, and then was like, okay, I played sport. I'm gonna get away with this, no. Mm-hmm. There's so many good things around there in North that don't get an opportunity because of this little decision that they don't have guidance and people constantly talking to them and one thing I can talk to them, kind of giving them advice for them to stay intact and. And that's what we gotta constantly do, as you know, as um. Okay, hear me. Yeah, I got you. As people, you know, and then you know, kind of gather each other and constantly send these kids messages and stuff mm-hmm. like that, you know. And that's what I've been thinking. Like, it's like just bringing people like Abu Muhammad, people that've been to like Jabril Peppers, mm-hmm. you know, uh, who else? Uh, Rasul Douglas. Mm-hmm. These players, like the kids, could see like because you could say this, but the kids like and then. Like and then you bring somebody that's okay. This is what we've been through. This what this what happened. This what I'm doing. And and not only that, but I'm gonna show you the proof. And like I'm gonna show you proof what I did. My high school film. This is what I looked like back then. Right. You know what I mean? And this is what I look like now. And this is what I want to look like. You know what I mean? Right. Like a lot of kids, you can talk, you can talk to a kid. The kids can go to one ear and go out the other ear. <laughs> Once you leave that room, they just forget about it. Now they're back to reality. And they forget about. It. So, and that's the advice I would give the kids. That's what I'm talking about. Well, I mean, last year you had your first ever camp at uh, Barringer High School or School Stadium. That was dope, man. Yeah. A lot of kids um, that was there showed up. I seen you had the whole Rutgers staff there. That was just like big, man. And I could see that now with yourself, Aqua Dean, to hear 
Rasul, you know, everybody, Jabril having their camps around, you know, it just gives more life. It gives more, um, it, it adds more light to the youth in our town to say, you know what, if he can make it, I can make it. And it's better for you to be around to say that rather than Coach Don, rather than Coach Nimi, Coach Smoke, Coach Bell, Coach Grant. Because, I mean, we're saying things, and, yeah, sometimes we sound like parents. Like, go to school, get your classwork up, make sure you pass that test. It sounds like parents, but when you can see it yourself, you know, like this is a guy who went through some adversity, some trials, some tribulations, and he still fought his way to the top and got to this level whether it was going to be this level or not, he's still successful. Like, just keep pushing. Like, that's why I'm, I mean, I applaud you guys definitely for coming back. And I mean, like, if you ever need me in the building, you know, I'm always going to come through and try to make sure I advertise heavy for it because I understand what these kids missing. It's a lot of darkness in the hood. We all know that. So they need bright lights. And you guys come around this time of the year, the bright lights, man, they definitely like turn people up. Like, Oh, like I seen a kid. He still had the shirts on. Uh, like when we had a workout. So, yo, you still got that? You still got that shirt? Like, yeah, man. Like I was at the camp, coach. You don't remember? I'm like, yeah, I remember you, man. Keep on rocking, bro. Keep on rocking. Yeah. So that's what it's about, man. Just keep coming back. Keep paying it forward, man. Because that right there, and along with this conversation right here, is worth more than any amount of money you could drop off in the hood, man. Like knowledge is power. And if you could just kind of like inspire a kid and you could teach a kid some things mentally that'll help him grow, man, that's worth more than anything. You feel me? And that's why I had to get you on here. I wanted you to definitely uh, state your piece, man, and tell me about what you thought about, you know, what's some of your goals you got after it's all said and done with that whole NFL, of course. Like, what's your couple of goals you got personally? You know, a couple of businesses you want to run, community centers. What you thinking about? I mean, a lot of things. Um... First, first, first and foremost, doing this right now. I'm, I'm like new to this game. I'm fresh off in this game. <laughs> trying to handle football first. Football was going to be coming first. Yes, sir. Um, yes, but sir. I'm always, I'm always, I'm always seeking for knowledge. I'm always here and there, building connection with different people. I'm traveling, to build connection, and then, uh, learn from OGs like y'all. You smoke. You know, all your ask questions. And what can I invest in? What can I do? Mm -hmm. Um. Like, do I want to do like I want to? I'm trying to. My goal is to bring at like Quan all of the all. I talked to Quan before. Like I was like, yo, what if that, that people um like other outsiders coming to North and then buying land and whatever and taking over and whatever? Why can't we just? Why can't we be the investor that comes to court? Right. And then and then be that and be that real and you know be owners and buying land and and real estate and buildings and and paying for hospitals and buying some getting their kids kids to do that, so that and that's what I want to do establish you know when I get old in this game whatever, that's what I'm right. off the fifth time and try to figure ways to bring kids bring and have kids stay in their own state and then represent and just gather everybody together and just doing real estate and stuff like that and, yeah. and creating more. Like, I've just been doing a lot of stuff. I've been doing a lot of looking at foreign exchange, trying to educate myself and then also educating kids about saving money. Uh, you know, like, mm -hmm. they don't teach us that in school. Like, you know, <laughs> some real life stuff. Like, things yep. that, that yep. like, kids can actually learn and, and, and then develop themselves as young men and young women, you know? Right, and right. Help so not, not getting the handout, but out educating us on real stuff where credit for how credit works. Yes. Amazing. I mean, like, by me, I'm in this game right now, I can use my connection and try to go back in the hood and have people be educated with finances and credit cards mm -hmm. and how to spend money in real estate, uh, loans, and doing all that. So that's what I want to do. Right. That's what I want to do. Educate these young people. That's what I'm talking about right there, boy. Let me tell you something. You going to keep rocking, bro. I already know I got your back. I know you going got you putting your best foot forward. Like you said, uh, football is the number one business for you right now. You know what I mean? So you got to make sure you stay investing in your body, putting yourself in a position where you could not be, you know, not, nobody can take nothing from you. You know what I mean? Where you could get to gain everything. Um, it, I love what you just talked about right there. You definitely got to make sure you 
because you're on this level. So let's make sure that we grab all the resources while we're on this level. Read more, learn about that financial literacy, learn about investment properties. Like when you was talking about buildings and stuff, that's an investment property. That's something where after it's all said and done and you pay for this, money just going to keep coming in and coming in so you'll never have to revert back. So now that generational curse, of, or generational wealth curse that was possibly placed over your family is now gone. You know what I mean? Uh, I know your moms and everybody's proud of you. I know you got six more underneath you. You said you're the oldest of seven, so you got six underneath you. And they watching the show, bro. They watching the show. So I'm loving what you're teaching them, man. Just keep doing what you got to do, man. You let me know if you need anything from the DM. You know, I'm going to take care of you from whatever you need. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to just work for what I mean. Because at the end of the day, I know, I feel like, long as me and the other good brothers that we do know keep sowing into you, and we know that our kids are following you, then that means they'll be good, too. So that's why we want to help you in any shape, form, or fashion. You feel me? Absolutely. Let me and, see um, What's up? Um, I'm having so I'm having a camp soon on June's too. Okay. I'm you, whatever support you feel me. Oh come on, you already know, man. Shoot me the flyer. We're gonna post it up all over the network. The whole DM nation gonna come through. We're gonna shut that thing down, baby. You know what I'm saying? Last year I had my nephew come out there. He whoop, 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 he hit somebody up, man. This what we doing, man. We gonna come through. We gonna represent. I wonder if anybody out here got any questions. Let's see, man. I know you got the. Hey, look, Rutgers doing big things, man. I know they gotta make you proud. You know, you coming from Rutgers, and it's it's been it's about to be sick. Greg Ciano. Telling you, don't worry about it, man. I I trust and believe in what Greg Ciano does, man. I seen him work prior to this, you know, when he was at Rutgers before, man, doing big things. And uh, one thing I like about one thing I like about G is G recruit the hometown kid, you know, and I love that part because you know, like I know, the hometown kid, he he moved with a chip on his shoulder, you know, he grind differently, yeah. and when he get that opportunity, regardless how big or small it is, man, he just go get it. And that, that type of mentality around that whole culture, that's why they saying, yo, it's different over here. It's different. And, uh, you know, they bringing that chop. So they're just going to keep chopping away until I know they're just going to reach the whole greatness. Somebody else asked this question. What's your thoughts on Derrick Henry? Gene oh, King. He's a great player. Um, I mean, he's going he's gonna to get paid. He's going to be able to help his family for many years to come. Big guy. I played against him. See if there's any other questions. Let's see. Man, shout out to my man Quan Nito, brother. This is last year's contract year. About to go hard, about to go ham this year. So. Hey, hey. Brick City. Brick City, man. That's all we do, man. Brick we City. take over. It's a Brick City takeover, you feel me? Let's see. What's this question? What you think? What you think of you your man bless Austin? Chip, man, you just you move different, your edge is different. So, 
I know he's gonna come through. Let me see if it's only if it's one more question, then we'll ask it. If not, I'm let you get out of here. I wanna hold you up all night. They said, man, it's a blessing to have you on here, bro. I don't even know what to say. I'm a man on here. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I appreciate you having me here, bro. Yeah, yeah. This is really good. What you doing? Good for the kids, man. It's like sending a message out, especially going through this crisis, and learn kids to sit there and actually pay attention and you know take these notes and you're doing something big. Or yeah. Like, this is something big. It's to actually grow to big. You know, constantly. You know, with the consistency and bringing the community together. Mm-hmm. That so also you know share it with Quan and the rest of the guys. You know, you know, love and show support. Right. Let's see. Showtime want to know did Andrew Luck retire? Hey, you would chill out, man. Oh, oh, oh! I mean, we need that. How many sacks hey, you gonna you get? Would... You said you set the goal. You said every time I gotta set a goal. That's your man. Are you in the building? They want to know. Oh, North Carolina. Oh, North Carolina in the building. Oh, you bet. You better know who I am, little bro. Hey, listen, baby. Look, man, how you making out down there, man? You had your first year out in the belt. Like, how you feel? I feel good, you know. Um, just trying to make sure I get ready for this season. Mm-hmm. Now, it's, it's some big shoes right next to you. I mean, maybe not that big for you. I mean, I know you a dog anyway. So, the question is, you know, they said how many sacks he going to have. I got the question for you. Are you going to have more sacks than he is? That's the goal. That's definitely the goal. I'm trying to get it. I'm trying to get a sack. Hey, that's what I'm saying, bro. My goal, my goal is double digit sacks. My goal is double digit sacks. Everybody know that. Mm-hmm. But my rule, I write down and my rule each and every day is 15 sacks. I'm to get. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. 15 sacks. I want to get. That's been my goal. And 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 like I don't settle for less. But that's that's something I'm aiming at. I aim for double digits, 10, 12, whatever. I know that I'm aiming for that. That's why that's my highest my highest point right now. Yes, sir. I'm climbing that mile. I'm climbing that mile. I'm still coming, you know. And y'all see me work. Y'all see my work film every day. You know, I don't do it just to show up and everything. I do that to motivate these kids out there, like yo, because I go, I'm going to this obstacle with the ankle with the ankle surgery and whatever. But mm-hmm. I, you don't never see me sitting on power. I'm never gonna power in front of nobody else. I'm a man. You know what I mean, I'm a man yeah. who's like been through the been through, you know. Been through the jungle, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I've been through this out here trying to, you know, show everybody how to work. Man. Right. You know, no matter what. Life, and if they following you, you, if they follow you on your social media, man, it's it's nothing less than greatness. You see it, you see the grind, man. Like you see the rehab grind, you see the work grind on just trying to be a better player. Like you can see it. It's not it's nothing short of greatness. So for my people that are following, if you looking for um, inspiration, and here it is right there. It's Kamoko Tere. He he will definitely like imp- impress you guys and show you. How much of a grinder and how much of a leader and mentor that he is. Somebody else had a question here. How much did you learn from Justin Houston when he was there? But uh oh no, was he a great mentor? Oh yeah, Justin Houston was a great mentor. Um not my thing is like when I was when I first seen him, I was like, Yo, this guy is dope. Yo, this is what you gotta do. 
you gotta, you gotta, it's, it's like chess. And when you mm. play defense, it's like football is chess, you know, literally football is chess. It's like you're just trying to catch a man off guard, like right. literally trying to catch a man off guard. And you don't never know when you're gonna catch a man off guard. You just gotta set the move up. It's all about patience and whatever. So the sack, he always tell me the sacks from the number. As long as you get one sack, you had a great day. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So, you know what I mean? That's the advice he gave me. That's what's up. That's so, what's up. Yeah, Biggest change from college ball to NFL harder or easier than you expected? Uh, truthfully, I feel like <laughs> college football was harder than NFL. Mm, interesting. It's only because college teach you college teach you structure and, and and then how to become a pro. And if you're in the NFL, you're on your own. You gotta you gotta do everything right. If you're not, they're not gonna play college. If you do things wrong, you get punished. And then and you and you deal with your consequences. Mm. NFL, you got, you got one, you got a chance. You're not on, if you're undrafted, you're out there. You feel know I me? Mean? Like they're not, they're not about to, oh, they're not about to pat you in the shoulder. If you're a star player, they ain't gonna give you you out of there, bro. Like you gotta, you gotta be popping yourself mm. each and every day. If you don't know your playbook, you lose your spot. You're not going on another guy, bro. Every day, every day you gotta look over your shoulder. Somebody's trying to take your spot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you talking about doggy dog? Doggy. That's a doggy dog world, man. Everybody trying to eat, man. That's what it's about. It's about people trying to provide for their families. So, I mean, if it's gonna be you or me, I got a better on me. So I understand the mentality. That's why I know you got to come in there with that nook mentality. Like, listen, I've been hungry. I'm going to eat. Now, I don't know what y'all trying to do, but I'm getting to this bag, and this ain't nothing y'all can do to stop me. I know yeah. that's the vibe. I know that's the vibe. So, so what that? The question? What somebody asked, do you think you can make the Pro Bowl? Yeah, as soon as you get that gold, Pro Bowl bag. Oh, man, that's a, man, <laughs> I can't tell from the future, but that's, that's every goal, no matter what. That's every goal. goal. Every that Pro Bowl, no matter what. That's, that's, like, thing is, that's never, that's never crossed my mind that I never want to be a Pro I, I never want to be a Pro Bowl. Right. Like, unfortunately, I, I've, So I'm talking about. I see I got uh oh I see I got David Njoko on here. I need you on here, bro. Jersey hey, gotta David come David through. Up, Jersey David gotta David come David through. David. Cedar Grove. I'm I need not. need that Cedar Grove to come through here. So let's let's talk, man. Let's see. You got a couple of questions. You still good? You want to switch off? What you need? Let's see. Allen two nine thirty wants to know what's the toughest lineman you face. I mean, I face a good O-lineman. Anthony Gonzalez was a great uh, O-lineman from my point of view. Like, when I, when I was, like, literally, when I came in as a, like, when I came in as an OTA, as a rookie, I went against everybody. And I was like, yo, NFL, like, not to be cocky and everything, but, it's like, I have a mindset that no one can beat me. Like, right. truthfully, any O-lineman, I don't care who you are, you could be a pro, I'm a, I have that mindset that I'm going to go against you one-on-one, head-on. But, Sounds with that first day of practice, <laughs> and you think it was like, bro, I woke up, you know, everybody, everybody didn't get a wake up call, I had that wake up call, like, yo, yeah, you had it early. I gotta, I gotta work hard, I gotta, I gotta work on my speed fast, Sounds on practice had me waking up like, yo, I gotta get ready, because these NFL players are smart, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, they, and, and they're strong as hell, they, they can't some, this some grown man strength, bro. That job is different. You gonna get some grown oh. man. Yeah. It's different, boy. I know it's different, man. <laughs> I had to wake up, boy. I do got it. Oh, I said, oh, 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 o
Oh, oh. <laughs> get up off, get up off, man. Oh, man, I had to go back in my playbook. I said, I know the playbook. I got I had to go back in my playbook. <laughs> I, I, I was watching them Costanzo over and over and over. Wow. I said, I cannot, what can I pass this dude? This dude did not look big, bro. This dude looked cut up. He looked like he was 260. This dude, like, 290 or whatever, but Ooh. cut up and, like, thick. I said, this dude different. I said, wow. I got to get right. Wow. Like he was the hardest one. After that, then I went against other pro bowlers. I was like, I just, I just didn't think about it. Yeah, just yeah. Just eat go. up. Just eat up. Bumble, let's go. That's what yeah. I'm talking about. Let's see. All right, let me get you out of here, man. They they, 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 they blowing you up right now. Uh, let me see. I wanted to get to this one question. Uh, uh, Prospect, I thought I asked one of your questions already, man. I got like five of yours. Uh, Bumble, let's get into it. How did your first run in with Q Nelson go in practice? Uh, I didn't really go against Quentin Nelson like that, but yeah, cause he interior, right? He's a guard. Like, he's a guard, but when I do go inside, I mean, I just try to go as fast as can, cause, cause like, uh, Quentin Nelson is pretty strong too. He's a he's a strong fella. He's a big baby right there. That's a big baby right there. I seen I seen his clips. And, um, Yo, he he put I hands on jokers. Yeah, yeah, he gets he gets his hands on you. I mean, Ooh. I beat him. It's like a guy. Like, I beat him. He beat me. He's like, uh, uh, but I don't know. Iron sharpens iron. Like, when you do some plays, y'all get him. I'll go in there and get him. All right. All right, let me get you out of here. We done had, we done had you in for 40 minutes, man. Y'all done overran this boy Tom. Y'all loving him that much. That's what's up, though. <laughs> hey, look, Mogo, look, I got, the, I got the hood. I got the hood coming in the mail. All right. Told you I got to get that from you last time. Everybody, please support the drive, support the movement. Kamoko got hoodies, got T-shirts, man. Make sure you guys um, follow his journey, man. Cheer him on. And then just take heed to what he said tonight as far as using your time wisely and investing in everything correct, man. I might say, what position I play? You know what position I play? <laughs> but I consider myself as a pass rusher. I consider myself as a pass rusher. Pass rusher in the end is different. Right. But edge rusher. Look, man, let him know you're... I'm going to let my man go. I, yeah, hey, 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 Mogo, let him know you're a bag chaser, period. That's how you That's how you end that right there. I'm a bag chaser, okay? So whatever it is they need me to do, I'm going to go get to it. You feel me? Hey, this is what Robin Mathis say. With the money sign, A-C-K-S, the money sign. That's what the money at. Nice. Nice. You feel me? All right. No doubt, man. Thanks for coming out, fam. No problem. Like I said, man, that's my guy right there, Kamoko Ture, man. He's an amazing dude, bro. He definitely get right after that, man. I mean, we had a great show.